Oh, g'day. It's Rob from ECT for Health here. Uh, look, I get a lot of requests from people in my workshops to post uh, one of the sessions that I do on the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. I know, boring, but uh, I'm going to try and make it a little bit interesting. I do this in my workshops, um, but I don't have a YouTube on it, uh, at least not a, a good quality one. Um, so I thought I'd give it a crack here just on my little whiteboard at home. Um, so here we go. The renin angiotensin aldosterone system is one of the compensation mechanisms that your kidneys use when your blood pressure drops. Um, it's also the mechanism that pathophysiologically is activated when you age and the arteries that are going into your kidneys are starting to become hardened. It's called renal artery stenosis. Stenosis just means hardening of the artery, but it happens in in pretty much all of our arteries as we get older and older and as you probably know the older we get the more likely that high blood pressure starts to become uh, a bit of a concern or a, or a comorbidity as we age well the hypertension that we get when we age that primary hypertension or essential hypertension that starts through exactly the same chemistry that i'm about to go through here so what we're doing here happens normally when you go into shock when your blood pressure drops the blood flow through the kidney reduces and the kidney doesn't like that so it's going to do everything that it can chemically to try and increase your blood pressure to increase your perfusion. In age-related degenerative hypertension or essential hypertension exactly the same mechanism happens it's just that the kidneys got it wrong your blood pressure was probably at all the time normal but the kidneys wrongly assumed that your blood pressure was starting to drop so again it activated the renin angiotensin aldosterone system pushing your blood pressure up hence hypertension as we age so it's a bit geeky but i'm going to try and make it a wee bit interesting by telling my love story that some of you have seen uh, on our facebook page uh, so first of all let's get the basic physiology done so it starts in the kidney And that blood vessel really just represents the, uh, the glomerulus or the blood flow coming into every single nephron. So inside your kidneys, you have uh, around about a million nephrons in each kidney. Assuming that everyone's got two kidneys, some don't, but assuming that you've got two kidneys, then it's reasonable to assume that you're going to have about two million nephrons that you're born with. Look after them. Um, what happens with, these, uh, with the blood flow is that the blood flow is coming in through the vessel at the top. It's called the, the efferent arteriole. I'll just write that down. The efferent arteriole. And um, as the blood circulates into the nephron through this sort of crow's nest, here, referred to as the glomerulus, it then comes out of the nephron through the efferent. Efferent arteriole. Now, to finish drawing the picture of the nephron so that you get a bit of a, an overall sort of view of what we're looking at here, uh, we've got the glee, around the glomerulus, there is the Bowman's capsule. That's kind of like the sieve that filters your blood, little mosquito. The Bowman's capsule, uh, it turns into the proximal convoluted tubule, down into the distal tubule where most of your sodium and your potassium is, and water is reabsorbed from the ultrafiltrate. The distal tubule there, and it, it connects into what is essentially a major um, a, a major uh, a pipe which collects all of the all of the urine. So fundamentally, as as blood is coming into the kidney and through this glomerulus here, uh, the the plasma without the protein or the cells in it, all of the all of the dissolved water and particles, glucose and electrolytes and creatinine and urea and other waste products, uh, find their way through the filtering mechanism here and make their way through the tubular network of the nephron. About, as I said, about a million of those in every kidney. Um, 
as fluid is filtering through the nephron, stuff's being reabsorbed from it. We'll eventually do a proper sort of renal function uh, YouTube, but for now, I really want to get to uh, get to the blood pressure control side of things, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. But essentially, all the nutrients are sucked out of um, out of that filtrate. Uh, a very little bit of water, a little bit of nutrient, creatinine, urea, uric acid, phosphates, and other other sort of waste products. Uh, of metabolism are filtered out and eventually be become the urine. And of course, that's what we, we pee out. We've got a glomerular filtration rate of around about 90 mils per minute per 1.73 meters squared for the geeks in the room. Um, and we're producing urine uh, from all of that filtration to the tune of around about uh, half a mil to one mil per kilogram of lean body weight. So if you're an adult, that weighs 70 kilos, you'd expect to be making about 35 to 70 mils of urine every hour. And so there's your little bit of urine that comes out the bottom of it. But where the renin angiotensin aldosterone system kicks in is really over here uh, in, the, um, uh, in, in the blood, the vascular network. So it's called the renin angiotensin aldosterone system because it involves each each of those of those hormones and we'll talk about those. Uh, so located in the body of your afferent, sorry, your afferent, that's meant to be afferent, not efferent, your afferent arteriole, uh, in the walls of these blood vessels, there's little sensors and these sensors are pressure receptors or baroreceptors and what they do is they, they, they detect the, the blood flowing through that blood vessel and as the blood's pulsing into the glomerulus and driving filtration through the glomerulus and through that kidney, uh, what these sensors are doing is they're, they're like a finger on the pulse, just sort of feeling the pulsations. As you can appreciate, if your blood pressure were to suddenly drop, you went into shock or you, you, you dropped your blood volume or you had a maldistribution or your heart stopped pumping efficiently and therefore your blood pressure was to drop, then so too the amount of blood that's coming in through the kidneys, that's, that's obviously going to drop. And as a consequence, the kidneys are not going to be perfused the way that they want to be perfused. That filtration of 90 mils per minute per 1.73 metres squared, that's not going to be happening. Uh, and the kidneys' little sensory cells here, these baroreceptors, they're not going to be happy about that. So what they will do is they will send a, a chemical message, uh, a cytokine, a, a chemical uh, message, to a group of cells that live just in here. And these cells are referred to as the juxtaglomerular cells. By another name, they're called the granular cells. I'll draw those in. So these granular cells, they have this, um, this property to manufacture an enzyme. And, and this is where the whole renin angiotensin aldosterone system starts. Triggered by low blood flow coming into the nephron of the kidney. Renin is secreted directly into the efferent arteriole and into systemic circulation. This this hormone called renin. Now, this is where the love story starts. So, all was not right in Kidneyville with the town pressure. So the Queen said to her daughter, Princess Renee, <laughs> Renin. Princess Renee, to, to go out and make a difference to, to change the town pressure. In other words, the blood pressure fell, renin was released, and it was released into systemic circulation. Not long after renin is released into systemic circulation, it comes into contact with a, with a dormant protein that is already in your blood. It's manufactured in the liver, so I like to say that Princess Renee meets and falls and loves with a, a beautiful Italian man called Angio, who came from Liver Tony to the north. Angio or angiotensinogen is a hormone made, or a protein I should say, made in the liver. It's circulating right now in your bloodstream and unless he's been activated, angiotensinogen doesn't do anything. So he's just floating around right now in your blood, waiting for the love of his life, renin, to come along. So the two of them meet in the blood. Renin from the kidney, angiotensinogen from the liver, meet in the blood and one can only say there was chemistry and of course they fall in love and they have a love child and I like to say that their love child named after his father 
NGO was born. Now, NGO Tensin is the product of renin converting angiotensinogen. So it takes the angiotensinogen and renin changes it into angiotensin. This is the first of the angiotensins that are produced, so we call this angiotensin 1. I like to say he was the first born from their union. Now, angiotensin 1, again, is a dormant protein. doesn't have much to do in the blood. It's only formed when renin meets angiotensinogen. Angiotensin 1, or angiotensin 1, when he's circulating through the bloodstream, however, as he circulates in the bloodstream, he meets another molecule. And this molecule is manufactured dominantly inside, inside the lungs. Uh, and this is a molecule that is another enzyme, like his mother, renin, who was an enzyme. The enzyme he meets in the lungs is called angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE. So what we have is angiotensin 1 meeting ACE, and like all good women, she converts her man, she turns angiotensin 1 into the active protein, angiotensin 2. So we say that she activates him. He becomes angiotensin, where am I? Angiotensin 2. So angiotensin 2 has three roles in life. The three roles that angiotensin 2 does all increase blood pressure. The first one that angiotensin 2 does is it causes direct vasoconstriction. If I vasoconstrict, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the pressure inside my blood vessel. So it's very vasoactive. Angiotensin 2 causes vasopressing activity. The second role of angiotensin 2 is to stimulate the pituitary gland to release a hormone that's going to withhold or tell the kidneys to withhold water. If the kidneys are going to withhold the release of water as urine, then the, uh, then the blood volume is going to increase. This hormone is called antidiuretic hormone, sometimes also referred to as vasopressin. And so from the pituitary gland, antidiuretic hormone is going to uh, increase the water reabsorption back into the bloodstream increasing the blood volume, increasing the blood pressure. So both vasopressing activity and also the antidiuretic hormone, ADH, is going to increase blood pressure. The third role of angiotensin II and the final role of angio II is to go to the adrenal cortex. And what happens in the adrenal gland is there is a hormone called um, um, uh, aldosterone. And so aldosterone is a potent sodium retaining hormone. What aldosterone does is it tells the kidney, particularly the nephrons in the kidney, you need to reabsorb sodium out of the filtrate back into the bloodstream. And as sodium is pulled back into the bloodstream, it drags water out of the urine back into the bloodstream with it, again, increasing urine, uh, increasing blood volume, decreasing urine output, and increasing the blood pressure. So it is an aldosterone, A-L-D-O-S-T-E-R-O-N-E, -E, a hormone, a steroid actually, released from the uh, adrenal gland, is going to retain sodium, therefore retain water, therefore retain volume in the blood, therefore retain pressure or increase blood pressure. So it's a big sordid tail. We have renin from the kidneys, we have angiotensinogen from the liver, they meet in the blood to form the dormant angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 circulates through the lungs where it picks up the ACE enzyme, angiotensin converting enzyme, and together they form angiotensin 2, the vasoactive substance that causes vasoconstriction, that causes antidiuretic hormone, vasopressin release from the pituitary gland, and aldosterone release from the adrenal gland. All of those three things increasing blood pressure. If your blood pressure went low because of shock, your kidneys are going to take about 60 to 90 minutes to start this process to kick in to help you. If your blood pressure is normal, but your arteries have started to become hardened with age, renal artery stenosis has occurred, 
aging of your arteries, then these little sensors may wrongly assume that your blood pressure was too low. It may have been completely normal, but because they were no longer in a flexible artery and not able to feel the pulsation, then they become desensitized to the normal blood pressure, assuming that it's low, start this chemical cascade, the renin angiotensin aldosterone cascade. I hope that helps. I know it's geeky and sciencey. I cover this in most of our workshops, particularly our rusty pills and our cardiac stuff. And when I go through renal function, definitely we go through that in a little bit more detail. But I've been asked a few times to throw it up on YouTube, so I figured I'd give it a crack. Have a great day.